Welcome to an introduction to accounting brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Parkbench Tutors. Look for us on Facebook or on the internet parkbenchtutors.com. We're going to look at costing again and in this short podcast we're going to look at the way costs behave because that's the way we do a lot of our cost accounting. So what do we mean by how do costs behave? If we increase the number of units that we produce what happens to the cost? In other words, how does the cost behave? And what we discover is that not all costs will behave in the same way. If you keep increasing the number of units and some of the costs increase, for example, if you build, if you're making bricks, then obviously the more bricks you make, the more materials you're going to use. If you're making tiles, the more tiles you make, the more clay you will use. So if one brick used 500 grams of clay, then we could say that the 1,000 grams would require 1,000 times 500 grams of clay. In other words, clay behaves as a variable cost. When the number of units are increased, the cost increases. If we were to plot a graph, then quite simply, if we plot cost against number of units, we get a slope. In contrast to this, there are fixed costs. If we rent an industrial site where we make the bricks then the cost of the rent remains the same and it doesn't depend on the number of bricks that we make. So in this case we say that rent is a fixed cost. So a business paying rates on premises would view the pre payment of rates as a fixed cost in exactly the same way. So there's our difference then, fixed costs and variable costs. If we plot our graph of cost against number of units with fixed costs it's simply a straight line. Now we also have something called step costs. What we mean by step cost is that they stay the same until you get a certain point and when you reach that point then the cost will suddenly jump in a single step and that process can be repeated in a number of ways and a number of times. So if you've got warehouses being used for storage Obviously, the fixed cost of the storage remains exactly the same until the warehouse is filled. Then, if you suddenly need a second warehouse, then you get a step up in the fixed costs when the second warehouse is needed. And then those fixed costs will remain the same until the capacity of that warehouse is reached. So that's what we mean by step costs. And if we plot costs against number of units, that's the graph that we're going to get. And you can see why we call them stepped. Now we also have mixed costs where part of the cost is variable and there's a part that's fixed. So if you look at your electricity bill or your telephone bill you will find that you've got mixed costs on both of those. For your electricity supply or indeed your gas supply you may well find a standing charge per quarter and then a charge for each unit consumed. Or in gas and electricity these days it might even be a standing charge per day and then a charge for each unit consumed. In the same way, when you have a telephone line, you pay a fixed rental per quarter, and then you pay a charge on top of that for each call. So, how do we charge costs to cost units? Well, we'll go into this in more detail in another podcast. Suffice at this point to say there are two methods. Absorption costing, or full product costing, where we take all the production costs and we charge them to the cost unit. Or marginal costing, which is period costing. In this case the variable production costs are charged to the unit because they vary with the amount produced but the fixed costs accrue with time and they are treated as period costs. How we associate costs with a job? Well that depends on the industry that we're looking at. In the construction industry we might use what's called job costing because it's possible to identify the costs fairly easily with any particular job you're building five houses then you can identify the costs for building those five houses. If you're producing batches, supposing for example that you are producing paving stones or bricks or tiles or whatever for the construction industry then you may have an order for a particularly large number, say 2,000 paving stones. Then you could cost simply the batch, right? How much it costs to produce that batch. There are some industries where it's not really possible to do either of those. So if you've got a continuous production situation, like the refining of uh, oil to produce petroleum or gasoline, 
then that's not a, usually a suitable method batch costing or job costing we need to look at something else um, similarly the drinks industry where there's a continual flow of beer or coca-cola or whatever it might be in this case we do average costing we divide the total costs by the units produced in order to record costs we use systems of coding the most popular one is a hierarchy co cost coding where you build up the coding from left to right and the first digit can represent a department the second is going to represent a task and so on so that each time a cost is uh, accumulated a coding is applied to the cost that then is a nice simple introduction to costing behavior for you thank you for watching and for listening we wish you success in your studies if you want further information look for us on facebook park bench tutors or on the internet parkbenchtutors.com. Thank you.